right now? Yes, you may do that. I'm gonna start mine. Alright, for syncing features, Seth. Aaron. You want me to do the same thing? Yeah. yeah. Alright, Carla. <laughs> it's so funny. Some guests are always like, I was going to do it, but I did it right like, away. And then others are like, should I do it? So we always <laughs> wait and we see. <laughs> just make it awkward. Have we had a guest that goes first? Where they're just, are they like second or something? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe. We'll have to have like a prize draw for when that happens. Are you and, in Florida right now, Carlos? Yeah, I'm in Pensacola, Florida. So it's the northwest of Florida. Very close to Alabama. So I'm probably 15, 20 minutes from Alabama. Okay, cool. It's a Florida cool. panhandle, so it's a long part uh, northwest. Uh, fun fact, I'm in central time zone. Um, I will say 99% of the people think that Florida is um, Eastern time. Huh. But everything west from Tallahassee is um, central. Yeah, that's weird. That's why you said central time, and I was like, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I had no idea. Yeah, that makes more sense now. Okay. Yep. It's like, how big is Florida? Florida's constantly in the news, Dude, so it's for huge. lots of different so, reasons. But <laughs> um, from from where I live to Miami, it's about a ten hour drive. Wow! wow. Awesome. Yeah. Is there anything you want mentioned? Do you have any projects on the go, or, or things coming up that you want to talk about in this episode specifically, or um, are we nothing I can think of? So okay. um, I do have my own podcast that I stopped for about six months. Okay. And I'm actually starting it back on Thursday. And nice. Um, I will say it's uh I mean it's about a year and a half old before I stopped it. Um 40 episodes in. So I was trying to be pretty consistent. And then, <clears throat> you know, I lost track of it and it's been it's been a little while to get back into it. But <clears throat> I'm excited. I love I love, you know, chatting with people that have a similar passion than I do. So Right. Uh, but you don't have to mention any of no, that. No, we'll talk about that. We'll definitely talk about that in the episode. Sweet. If that's and cool. Yeah. Other than that, uh, I mean, um, I don't know if you want to mention it, but one of the things that I've been trying to do with my business is um, eventually being less on the road and more in the education part of it. And I've been starting like find methods what will be like the best way to, um, you know, share some of my knowledge and about a month ago, I started like the subscriber thing on Instagram. Just okay. to see, you know, like, see who's interested. I thought I was going to get like four or five people. Uh, next thing I know, I have 55 people subscribed. I was like, wow. Oh, that's, yeah. Um, I wasn't expecting. I was just trying to like test like what will work. Uh, and I'm working with some uh, the same guy that's helping me produce the podcast. We're looking that's into cool. ways to um, maybe open like a Patreon or or something uh, you know, along the lines to um, go more more into the education route, like teaching and you know sharing stuff. Is your uh, podcast called Content Lab? Is that right? Yeah, yeah. Content Lab podcast. Yeah. Okay. Well, we'll talk about Pretty it. Cool. And that subscription thing is interesting because I've looked at that. I don't want to get too much into it because I'll say it. We'll talk about it the best the first time. But I've just kind of looked at it and I was like, oh, who's going to subscribe to this? Like, I know. I guess that's, yeah, <laughs> that's exactly what I thought. And I was like, I don't even know like what will be the best way to like share content. But uh, my girlfriend kind of gave me the, the idea of it. She's like, do it. I mean, just test it out. Yeah. See who's like interested. Uh, yeah. It's pretty cool. So I have, uh, we yeah. have like a chat and we like talk about like upcoming projects and like feedback about videos. And what I usually do is that it, um, when, I'm, when I want to share like a timeline or something that I'm working on, I uh, record on Loom and then I okay. like export it only for the... Um, for the subscribers. So, so far it's uh, good. Of course, there are some limitations by just being on Instagram. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But um, definitely just like testing the waters to, or eventually doing something different, but in the same, you know, teaching industry type of deal. Okay, cool. That's cool. Great. And how do you, how do you say your last name? Bone or Bound? Bound. It's like Brown without the R. So Bound. 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 Yeah. All right. Yeah. Where okay, are you guys cool. located? I'm in Canada and Aaron's in Connecticut. I'm in Connecticut. Oh, sweet. I figured I say you were Canada, it's a giant uh, land mass. When I you said um, out, I was like, oh, he's probably from Canada. <laughs> yeah, I still, I don't know. I hang around so many Americans, but it, that, that'll that just never slip from yeah, my never vocabulary. Slip. The way I say certain things, people catch on pretty quick. And I'm in but. sunny Connecticut, the Florida of the North. <laughs> nice. <laughs> the Florida of the North. Is it still Thank cold you. over there? 
Yeah, there's potentially some snow in the forecast actually for Wednesday and Thursday, but I, I think it's going to oh. lean towards rain. So we're we're in like the 50s and 40s. Uh, drops down at night a little bit, but it'll it'll be warm soon. We skip spring up here. We go from like freezing and rain to now it's 85 and humid. Like that's oh, what wow. happens. Just like in that's a week. Sickening. Yeah, you yeah. get like one week of like wow, this weather's amazing, and then it's gone. Then it's mm-hmm. full summer. Well, so, uh, what you get for living in Connecticut, man. I guess so. <laughs> uh, Carlos, are you doing video too? I might've missed that in the beginning. Yeah. Yes, he's, got his, he's got his camera going right now. All it's right, in perfect. 4k, 4k horizontal. So when you crop in, it'll be vertical. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I got you, Aaron. Awesome. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Well, can we start? Is that cool? Yeah, yeah. Let's start. All right. Carlos, thanks for joining us, man. How are you? Great. No, thank, thank you guys for having me. I'm doing great. Um, it's been a pretty chill day. I was looking forward to the episode, so I'm yeah, having a good time so far. I gotta say, you're you're a great communicator. I don't know if that embarrasses you, but it's you know how difficult it can be to communicate with people on Instagram DM at times. You're just on it, and <laughs> that sets oh, you apart just right off the bat good. from so many different people. Like, I just love when people are easy to deal with. I don't know if you feel the same way. Just Absolutely. simple, responsive, show up on time. I think that's a minority of people. Would you agree? I mean, I was, um, I remember I was like, do you remember I texted you a few days ago? I'm like, I don't know if um, I'm going to be able yeah. to make it happen. I got a last second call to go to uh, the PGA Tour event in San right. Antonio, Texas. Um, and then last second, they they had to postpone the event. So I'm like, Seth, I can make it. Let's do it Monday. <laughs> but I agree. I mean, I think yes. um, <laughs> one of the, but you tell me that about a good communication, it's it's like it it feels good because that's something I really try to always work on. I, especially in this industry, I feel like having a good good communication with clients, with people you work mm-hmm. with, it's just super important. So I mean, I mean, I'm doing the right thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. What do you, when you say you're working on it, what does that look like? I mean, how do you continue to make that skill of yours better, being a better communicator? I think just being conscious of it is the first step. But are there certain things you do? Yeah, well, um, I always tell people that I feel like good communication with a client is what's going to uh, create that longevity relationship, that long relationship with a client. Um, I just feel like just having that, you know, um, what you said, like the client feeling that they, they can always reach out to you and you're going to have an answer. Or you're not going to like disappear for a few days. It just kind of brings them that reassurance of like, you know, he's on top of the project. He's mm-hmm. going to deliver everything on time. and. Uh, I'm just conscious of it. I just really try to make sure I have good communication with people I work with, clients. Um, yeah. Yeah, being timely is super important. Just Absolutely. sometimes when I've found in the past, some of my mistakes have been where I've had a potential prospect and they've been really interested in something I have to offer. And then I think, oh, I'll get back to them in 48 hours or a couple of days. And that seems like a short amount of time. And then the enthusiasm from their end is sometimes gone. That's been a big yeah. mistake of mine in the past. And then more so when people are, when prospects are, are, are enthusiastic, I try to get back to them within that 24 hour window while the energy is still high and there's still excitement to start a project or do something. Absolutely. So I've just and, found that's a mistake of mine in the past. Yeah. And I feel like it goes both ways too. When, when a client reaches out to me and I'm having a conversation, like trying to, you know, schedule a project and I, and their communication is not the best. It kind of like brings a red flag sometimes mm-hmm. uh, when it takes days to like, you know, communicate about like, uh, what am I, am I going to be doing? Like, Hey, are we all set for the travels and everything? Uh, it just kind of, uh, I don't know. It just creates some red flags. Like, I mean, if it's always going to be like this at some point, something bad's going to happen. Um, right. And on top of my head, like when I think about the um, clients that I've had the best relationship with, I have a great communication with them both ways, like the way they communicate with me and the way I communicate with them. And I just feel like in what we do is like super important. So, yeah, we want life to be easy, man. We want to work with people who are easy to work with. It goes both ways just because you're providing the service of the product doesn't mean you have to take on all, take on difficult people just because they're paying you. Right. (laughs) Nobody needs that extra drama in in their life. Life should be drama free. Uh, So, We had a listener of the show, shout him out, Daniel Middleton, who DM'd us and said, have you guys heard of Bound Media? And I said, no, what's that? (laughs) 
And he goes, he's probably, in my opinion, one of the best in the CrossFit industry for video. His story is super awesome also and how he came to America and started this journey. So there's a lot to unpack there. What's this journey he's talking about? What's your, what's your story? Um, well, before I start, shout out Daniel. I met him yeah. at the Rogue Invitational. I think it was October of, October of last year. And right when I saw him, he like approached me. He's like, hey, nice to meet you. My name is Daniel. I've been following you for a while. Um, just kind of, you know, creating that like networking relationship. And um, that, that there's always a few amount of people that kind of like stuck in your head because of the way they approach you, how like interested they're about like learning stuff. And literally since like the week after he was already like DMing me, asking me some questions, uh, willing to learn and, you know, grow his uh, business. So uh, for anybody listening uh, and you're just getting started, I think that's a great way to go. That's me personally. I did a lot of that when I got started. Um, looked up to a lot of people that I reached out to. Some people didn't answer. Some people answer with, um, um, you know, willing to to uh, help and and give me advice. And those are the kind of people that I still remember to this day. And, you know, um, I always said that if, if at some point I'm in the position that I can give back to, I can kind of like pay it forward like people did, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do that. So I'm glad I'm in a spot right now that I can do a little bit of that. Yeah, it's interesting because when, when we're beginners and we're reaching out, we don't forget that when we've kind of got to the place we wanted to get to. You know, successful people don't forget <laughs> being a beginner at something and the courage it takes to approach and ask questions and feel at times stupid or at times feel like you don't know everything. Like that's not easy for a lot of people to sit with, right? Being a beginner, I think is hard for a lot of people, right? And I think when you can approach someone like yourself and just say, hey man, I like your stuff and, and just feel comfortable asking tons of questions and not, not being annoying or feeling like you're being annoying. I think that, like you said, the way he approached you makes you want to help. It makes you want to, to give back and improve other people's lives. I think good people at heart, we all want to give our, our time and energy and knowledge back in some way or form. I think it fulfills us, right? Absolutely. <laughs> Yeah, we we all uh, all remember being there, like you said, Seth. I mean, I can pinpoint right now without thinking too hard the two very important people in the beginning of my journey that just like egged me on, you know. And it's it's just very clear when someone takes the time to help a little person, you know, with someone with a two hundred followers, and it, versus being like, man, this isn't going to do anything for me, you know. Uh, I think that sort of taking the time and and you can't do everything. You can't talk to everyone sometimes, but sometimes the way someone approaches you is in such a nice and like inviting way. You're like, ah, oh, this person has some skill. Like, look at the, they're, they're really trying. I'm going to, I'm going to help them out. I'm going to have a conversation. Maybe I can learn something from them too. So I, I think that is uh, that's mm -hmm. so important. Absolutely. And, and again, just for, I remember the moments, the actual moments of like, Oh, like someone's, someone's helping me out. You know, can you remember them in detail? I'm oh, curious. Yeah. Absolutely. Share, share. Uh, Brett Blakely, for one, um, at the time had, had, I had like, I don't know, 500 followers. He had maybe 25,000 and he reached out and was just like, dude, in one year, you're going to have a hundred thousand followers. You're that talented. And whether he's blowing smoke or whatnot, but just like the positive sort of, uh, like affirmation of like, Hey, I'm on. I'm on some sort of right track here. And then he just kept talking and like, I want to introduce you to this friend. I want to introduce you to this friend. I want to introduce you to this friend. That's how we met. Essentially. I, I do track it back to Brett probably being yeah. so networking um, and sort of just the way he is, his personality. And then number two was as I got into it, Brooke little bear, um, she, she put a mention on uh, an Olympus interview panel she had and they asked her like, who are some photographers you look up to right now? And she actually said like, actually right now, uh, like I'm, I'm really liking this guy. Aaron's like editing style and that just blew me away and and she was she is we know her very well super friendly to this day so those two moments were just very clear sort of like wow this person is is taking the time they're recognizing something in you and and in giving some effort towards your well-being they're not being like nah like nah too bad you're too small 
you know, and that, that just means a lot. And they're very close to us to this day. I, I love that you mentioned that some people that, you know, like you're helping out them and they're looking up to you, but you can still learn stuff from them. Mm -hmm. Because every time like somebody reaches out to me and we're kind of in that relationship of like me giving advice, I learn something new. Like um, I was telling you guys before I started the episode that now I have that group of people that I'm like uh, mentoring kind of. Mm -hmm. And and they talk about some things that I'm like, huh, interesting. I'm going to I'm going to look into that. And I feel like I'm constantly learning um, by, you know, giving advice and then they give me feedback in some other things. but. Yeah, I, I think it's so important to, even if you got to, you got to a point that you were successful. Uh, I tried to look back at like the mom, the, um, the days that I was getting started and I was talking to a few friends the other day. I'm like, dude, I, I look back at those days and I, I love them. I love mm -hmm. those days. Like, uh, it was just a different grind. Mm -hmm. Just waking up, like just excited to go shoot new stuff because you remember like the, the things that you shot two days ago look not good at all. And you're like excited to learn new things that you go on YouTube, you search for your favorite YouTubers, you watch countless of hours of video. And it's it just like a, this like excitement of always like learning something new. Um, and I, I mean, that's how I figure out like this, this is what I'm passionate about. Like I'm spending hours and hours of learning. And I'll tell my friends like those days are the days that I, I look back and like cherish the, cherish the most. Like I, I love those days, the days of like, a client asking me, Hey, can you, can you be here in Louisiana by tomorrow? And I'm like, Oh yeah, absolutely. I can be there. And I'm like driving and like taking naps in my cars, like overnight sleeping in a car mm -hmm. or a client like, Hey, um, great opportunity, this, that. And, but unfortunately we don't have, um, enough budget to pay for your hotel. Like we can pay your day rate, but we can, do you have somebody to stay with? Oh, absolutely. And I'm saying like my friend's, uh, floor just getting, like some mattresses or like on the couch, yeah. just like that different grind that it's just like doing whatever it takes to be there. And like, um, just those days are like, dude, I look back at them and I'm like, yeah, it was a grind. It was a lot of work. It sucked a lot of the times, but I just, I love them. And that's, that's what made me the person I am today. Right. And I think that's, those are the sacrifices that we all have to take at some point getting started or even now, like, we have to take sacrifices to get to a point that we, we want to be. Yeah, that's an interesting point with sacrifices. I think it raises a good question of how much do you want to sacrifice or give up to achieve X? You ever think about these questions? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, and like, again, it's different, it's different for everybody. Right. right. It just depends on your goals or like what, what you want to do. I've always been kind of like, aiming high and um i hate to say it but i'm a lot of uh, i apply the fake it until i make a method or at least i did when i got started a lot um can you do <laughs> what does that look apps? like what's oh, yeah. what's fake it till i make it look like to you like what I is mean, on top of my head <laughs> um this guy i was um i was taking photos for uh, this mexican restaurant i i think this is 2018 and one guy approaches me he's like hey do you do drone photography i'm like uh, yeah, I mean, I double. Yeah. At this point, I didn't have a drone. He's like, I have a <laughs> the next day company. you're buying one. <laughs> I have a roofing company. Um, and we want to take some, you know, drone photos of some of the new stuff that we've been building. Can you do this? I'm like, oh yeah, absolutely. Like, uh, let's make it happen. Let's book a day. And this was before, um, I was really dialed in into videography. I was just doing photography at this point, early 2018. And he's like, hey, can you record also some videos of like, you know, some drone videos of like outside? I'm like, oh, 100%. Uh, he was located in Panama City Beach, which is about two and a half hours. So we booked the day. I ordered a DJI Mini, the first one. Um, got the DJI Mini, watched a bunch of YouTube videos. And then when I'm driving there, I'm literally watching YouTube videos while I'm driving. I put my phone there. I'm watching YouTube videos of how to color grade better, how to optimize, I don't know, Final Cut Pro. I'm just learning while I'm driving there. I'm like, I don't know what I'm doing, but I told this guy I can do this. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make it happen. And yeah, man, those are, those are such fun yeah. days, you know, like just this different level of like, not anxiety, but like, am I going to be able to pull this off? But whatever it takes, I'm going to do it. 
And right. yeah, it, it worked out, you know. Right. I, I do I not recommend that. this to everybody, but <laughs> no, I feel like you haven't if you, if you haven't slept in your car to get a a shot. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure you're really in it. And, you know, I mean, I'm 100%. saying that with a grain of salt, but like, I feel like any photographer I know has spent a horrible night in their have. car. Have you, Seth? I'm trying to think. Maybe you, you just, maybe you just canceled just my photography career. I just, career. I just canceled them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'll have to it's think about it and get back to you. It also yeah. depends on the, in the industry, I guess, because um, in the sports industry, sometimes getting started, there's really not that much money. So... Sometimes you really want to be a part of a project and unfortunately the, the budget is not there. So I did a lot of that, like sleeping in my car and taking naps while I'm driving just to make sure I get there. Well, not um, while you're driving. No, no like <laughs> naps not while I'm driving. Like, Unless he has a Tesla. Well, I'm on yeah. the way there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and, yeah. And yeah, I mean, I slept on floors and couches and, but, you know, I, I tell people all the time, Try to enjoy those moments and don't take shortcuts. Like if you have to go through that, just know that if you keep like grinding with the, the goal that you have, most likely you're going to make it. A lot of people just quit mm-hmm. when they start feeling all the, uh, can I, can I swear on this, on the podcast? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, swear away. Feeling all that, you know, the, that just... shitty like feeling of like, <laughs> gosh, nobody like, am I even going to make it? Like I'm sleeping on floors. I'm making $350 a day and I'm grinding day and night. Like, is this even worth it? Um, and I feel like everybody has to go through those moments of like feeling that like, I don't know if I'm going to make it, uh, but I really want it. Yeah. And so I tell people, don't tell shortcuts, like live through that. Like if for some reason you make it without going through all that, you're in the 0.001%. Most, most people, they really get in a shitty, um, you know, start and, you know, start figuring it out. Nobody starts with like knowledge, right? Like we all trying to figure out from the beginning. Yeah. Seth, you just said it. I mean, everything is hard. Like everything is hard to a point. And do you want what's on the other side of hard? Do you want like those, those rewards? Or not even what's on the other side, man. Like, do you just, do you you enjoy (laughs) it? Maybe I'm a masochist, but like hard stuff's fun. (laughs) Yeah, it (laughs) is. We're going to get into this because Carlos here shoots CrossFit and those people, (laughs) CrossFit athletes suffer and love every second of it. Right. True. And I feel like there's also a level of like, uh, some people are just comfortable at some point and they don't push themselves mm-hmm. to the, like different levels. So I don't know, as I said, it's subjective to everybody. Like what, how, right. how bad you want to push it to, or like to what levels you want to get to. Some people are just comfortable by shooting, you know, one wedding a weekend. Some people are just looking to be, you know, top 10 wedding videographers in the world and want to shoot 50 weddings a, a week. So it, yeah. it kind of depends on anybody and everybody. Yeah. I wonder what the difference is between people who, and feel free to talk this out, you too. The difference between someone who gets asked, oh, can you do, can you do video for my roofing company? And they have no idea how. There's two kinds of people. One goes, yep. And they figure it out. And the other one goes, no, I, I don't know how to do that. Sorry. Yeah. I, I mean, wonder what the defining factor or factors are in those two kinds of people in that decisive moment. What do you think? I don't know, but me starting off, I did everything. I did. I took photos of pets, babies, families. I did weddings for about three, four years. Uh, the roofing thing. I, I was in like, if somebody will reach out to me and be like, hey, can you take photos of my phone? I want to like sell it online. I'm like, sure, I'll do it. I you know, I'll figure it out. And, and then from there, I kind of started developing more love into the sports side of it. And that's when I realized maybe if I really want to be successful at this, I'm going to dive harder into that industry. Um, but it's funny because I started in sports, then it started doing all this kind of stuff for four years. And then I'm back into what got me started into you know, the, this world of content creation, photography, videography. Right. And I just realized I never answered your question about my journey. So we can, <laughs> you know, it's, a, we'll bring it back. We'll bring it back. We love yeah, tangents. Back. We love tangents. But before we go on to that, Aaron, do you have an opinion on that question I posed? 
Say the question again, because in his answer, it just kind of slipped my mind. So let's say you come to me and you ask me to do drone video work. And right, I right, 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 how to right, do right, it. Right. I can mm-hmm. say, yep. And I can learn on the fly or I can there's say two <laughs> kinds of people. Right. Um, yes. Is that too black and white? No. Well, there's probably, there's a spectrum I'm sure. But I, I, when you were saying that, I think there's, there's people that have tried many things. You said you've tried many different niches and, and you got there. You, you have the data of like, oh, I, I tried to take photos of infants. It was hard at first, but I learned after the, the first shoot what to do, what not to do. Then I tried the, a wedding and I learned that pretty quickly. Uh, so you, you gain confidence in terms of your own ability. I think self-knowledge is really important in this ability to say yes to someone or no, I'm, I'm, that's not where I'm comfortable. Uh, and I'm not going to be able to do it, whatever it is. Like if someone said drone photography, you might know enough to say, Oh, DJI, they're pretty, they're pretty simple in terms of how they fly. If someone said, Hey, can you do FPV drones? And do you have a, do you have a license? You might go like, that's going to be tough. In three days, you you just have to know your 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 levels and know where you feel confident. And um, I I think it just comes from like experience of failures and and saying like oh I I've been able to like get through things before. I can I have four days. I can I can order a drone. I can watch enough. I think I can press it. I can I can do this. I can I can do it. I'm gonna say yes. I'm gonna go for it. Uh, what's the worst that could happen? I'll make my budget reasonable. So. You know, if it doesn't go well, they don't have much to complain about. It was the cheapest drone pilot they're going to find. So I I think there's ways to like mitigate the risk. And if you feel comfortable in that, then you, you go for it. And if you feel like, no, this is a really tall ask, I'm not going to be able to do it. uh, You, you can bow out. Yeah. And I love that I did all this stuff, like weddings and family photography. Um, A lot of people were telling me like, dude, you have a different style of like shooting sports. And I, I mean, in my mind, I, I was just doing my thing. Right. And then, um, I started noticing that a lot of people that were doing that, that I was like really looking up to in the same industry, they had a background in wedding photography, landscaping, just kind of knowing how to use the sun in your advantage, just kind of like, um, combining different worlds and then transitioning those styles into CrossFit. And then one person, they tell me, she's like, I think your style, you have that style because of the, the, the years of weddings that you shoot, that you shot. Um, and you just, just have that like warmer color feel. You use the sun differently. You use different angles. And I'm like, I mean, it kind of makes sense, right? Like um, you just combine worlds and different styles and then you provide something kind of unique instead of somebody that just did sports photography the whole time. Yeah, that's very, very true. Seth and I talk about it all the time when we, we go on our trips or we meet up a couple times a year and we're usually shooting some sort of um, product along with it. Uh, Primarily we do wildlife and landscape photography. So using a wildlife lens to do uh, clothing portraits is very interesting, but it gives a very different look and it's almost easier for, for us, for me to kind of observe the person as if they're an animal doing something far away. I'm not directing them, but like more candid and get that weird compression with a 600 millimeter. That's different than anything they're going to see in terms of like a typical, um, photo shoot for, photographer uh, for clothing uh and it just adds like the skill set just adds and adds and adds where you can do a lot of different things because you have all these different experiences with different lenses different looks different editing styles different light usage and you can use things from weird weird genres to create things in other genres and and just make it flow in a very unique way which i think is the name of the game with so much oversaturation and uh, the technology and the ability to buy a camera and take some great photos right off the shelf, I think being able to compose and have some uniqueness to that is uh, is paramount uh, to be successful. Agreed. Yeah. All right. Let's get back to this journey. Yeah, the journey. The journey to re- to oh, to reiterate his story is super awesome, and how he came to America and started his journey is cool. Oh, now I'm, I'm nervous. Maybe I'll tell a story, and everybody's like, "Ah, it's not. That oh, cool. it's not that cool." Yeah. All right. Well, <laughs> dramatic music in the background. <laughs> that'd be sick. 
Um, so I was born in uh, Venezuela, Caracas, the capital of Venezuela. And honestly, like my whole child, I had a great parents, great childhood, nothing that I can complain about. But obviously, like living in Venezuela was never safe or easy, you know, like there is, uh, we're not going to get into it, but it's just a tough country to have like a bright future in whatever you want to do. Right. Um, so since I was like 13 years old, I always wanted to go to America. I'll watch TV shows and I'll be like, gosh, I want to, I want to go there. How can we make this happen? Like I want to, I want to live in the United States. Uh, all the bands I will listen to, I'm a huge music guy. So all the bands I will listen to, you they'll, you know, remember the MTV days, um, mu- music videos and stuff like that. And I'll be like, dude, this looks like such a blast. Like I want to, I want to be there. I want to go to, to that country. And, um, growing up, I was a golf player. I was in the, um, uh, Venezuelan national team since, team since oh. I was fifth, I think maybe late 14, 15 years old. I traveled to eight or nine different countries representing Venezuela. And that was my plan the whole time. I want to go to, I want to get a golf scholarship and go to the, to the United States and play NCAA golf. Um, when I was 13 years old, I mean, there's an interview I can, I can probably send you guys the a screenshot, but I got an interview when I was 13 years old and they asked me, what's your biggest goal? But like, what, what will be like a perfect, the future for you, what, what we want it to be? And I said, I want to get a scholarship and move to the United States. Um, when I was 17 years old, I told my parents I was tired of being in, I, I don't want to be in Venezuela anymore. There's no future for me there. Um, one time I went out with some friends and my mom got a call saying that his son was um, kidnapped and they started asking her for questions. And while this happening, they were trying to call me and I don't know, for some reason I didn't, I wasn't, you know, I wasn't with my phone and it was like the 10 worst minutes of my mom's life. They were just trying to get her quick, like, hey, send us money. Your son is getting up without knowing where I was. Then she calls me again and I'm like, oh, hey, how are you doing? And she's like crying, like, are you okay? This whole thing. And when that happened, they said, I think enough is enough. We're going to figure out how to, how to get you there. You, it seems like you're somebody that really like wants this bad and you're just not going to go around and, you know, do crazy things over there, right? I was 17 years old and I moved to Orlando area. So my plan was after I finished high school, once I moved here, um, was to play as many junior tournaments as I could. So um, coaches will go to all those junior tournaments and they'll like try to recruit good people, good players. And I played a few tournaments and I got some offers. I got two main offers, one to go to University of Memphis and one to go to University of West Florida. Um, Memphis seemed a little more attractive. It was a top 20 at that point it was ranked top 20 D one. Um, the scholarship wasn't as good. University of West Florida. I knew some people were playing there. That's here in Pensacola. And the coach, I don't know, for some reason, the way he was like interacting with me, he's like, Hey, come to a visit. Let's do it. I came here to Pensacola. I spent about two days. My dad came with me. And I loved the school. I loved everything, the team. And I said, let's do it. Let's, let's go to University of West Florida. And long story short, that's where I spent four years playing NCAA golf. I had great four years. Um, golf was in shortly after, I think it was my sophomore year, I realized that this wasn't going to be um, my future. I started not playing the way I wanted to. I started realizing that it's, you know, it's really hard to be up there. And, but I still finished my four years. I had a great, you know, four years of college, got on my bachelor's in business management. Um, right after that, I said, what am I going to do now? Um, I really have no plan. I'm just going to get an MBA. So I finished in the summer of 2016, two weeks after I started my MBA. Um, to recap a little bit, I got a call at the end of my senior year and they're like, hey, if you want to do your master's here and at University of West Florida, uh, your GPA ranks uh, to a point that you can get your first semester completely free. And then you can work as a t- teacher assistant and we can pay for your, for your degree. I'm like, done, let's do it. Free MBA. Uh, I mean, free. You have, I have to work mm-hmm. as a TA. And two more years, I got my master's in business administration. Um, and the week that I was 
the week that I was supposed to graduate and I was like, you know, this is going to be great. My family is coming here. Um, well, actually it was a month before my mom calls me and she says, Hey, your dad has cancer. Mm -hmm. Um, doctor told us that he has maybe two months. And I was like, out of nowhere, like it just, uh, it kind of, you know, it kind of like sits you back and you're like, I mean, something you will never expect and everything's hard because, you know, they don't know if they can make it here. Right. Uh, my dad, since day one, he's like, whatever it takes, I'm going to go there. I want to see my son, you know, getting his degree. And for him, it was really, really important to be here. Um, I mean, I've always said that my dad is the strongest person I've ever met. And, uh, he just found that energy or something to, for him to make it here. Hmm. Um, and unfortunately the day that I was supposed to go, that I was supposed to go to, um, my ceremony, uh, he has a, a really bad, um, it, it was just a tough day. We called the ambulance and they sent him to the, to the emergency room. And, you know, it was a terrible day. He, he, the, t the doctor pretty much says, we don't know how long he has left, but we have to do surgery right away. Right. And, um, brain cancer, surgery in the brain, long story short, um, it was probably a few weeks after that. And, and I'm thinking, okay, I just finished my MBA. My dad is very sick. Uh, what am I going to do? I really have no plan. Um, I have no jobs, job off. I had some job offers, but I was like, I want to do something that I know I can be with my dad. And, and that's when I was like, well, I've been, I've been helping my gym with social media. What if um, I get a better camera and I start doing social media for more businesses? And that, that's pretty much where Bound Media started. Um, right when my dad got sick, I wanted to spend as much time as possible with him. I didn't want to have a nine to five and then come back home and just, Hey dad, you know, I have to go back to work tomorrow. And I just started, started trying to figure it out there. Just trying to find clients, going to a few restaurants in town. Hey, I really like doing social media. Can we work something out? I come here two times a week, take some photos, run your social media. Um, I'm learning how to take uh, really good photos. You know, you don't have to hire anybody. I'm going to take all your professional photos. And yeah, man, it just kind of from there on it, um, it just escalated into what I'm doing right now. Uh, I don't know how far you want to get into the, the whole process of me getting to where I'm at right now, but I always say that my dad getting sick, unfortunately he, he passed a few months after that, but my dad getting sick got me in a, in a, in a route that I would have never expected and probably would have never happened. So, um, I don't know. I've always said that my dad, it's the most important person that's ever, my mom and dad had, had awesome parents, but, um, my dad was always that person that I looked up to. I always thought since I was a kid, he was the smartest person I've ever met in my life. I always thought he was right. I remember when I was like eight and somebody told me, you know, like your dad is actually not perfect. I'm like, what do you mean? His parents are perfect, right? Like you always think that, um, and I don't know, it, it almost felt like it was meant to happen. Even though it was the worst year of my life, um, it kind of brought me into a world that I would, would have never expected to be in, which is content creation and, and all this. And, you know, um, since the beginning, I, I worked hard. I wanted to make him proud. He was there for, for a little bit of my early success. Uh, getting my first social media client that was paying me okay money. And, you know, it was always kind of like, um, you know, keep, keep trying. He, he's he's going to be proud of you and I want to make him proud. Yeah, man. Thanks for sharing that. Wow. I mean, yeah. That's obviously a tough story, but uh, uh, hopefully you can look at it now as, you know, as like you said, like a, 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 a kismet sort of gift in a way to Absolutely. that little nudge, a little that like, most beautiful gift, most, you know, mm -hmm. selfless, like push in the right direction, you yeah, know? And it almost helps me all the time because there's a lot of projects that all I can think of, is it, all I can think of is my dad will be really proud or I want to make my dad proud. Um, cause, uh, you know, 
thinking about my first project in golf, that was my dad's passion, right? And that was what brought us like really close together. He's the one that taught me how to play golf. And it's what got me in, in the United States. You know, my, I, I owe the sport a lot, mm-hmm. but I never had the opportunity to do, to combine both worlds. What I grew up with, which was playing the sport of golf and what I'm doing right now. And I got a really cool opportunity to, um, to make um, like an ad type of deal for Scott Stallings, uh, which is a PGA Tour player. Yep. And, and to this day, I think, I think that was maybe a year and a half, two years ago to this day. That's probably my favorite project I've ever done. Um, and the whole time, all I can think of is, all I can think of is my dad. Like, I, like he'll be, his mind will be, you know, he wouldn't believe it that I'm doing this, right? Like this kid from Venezuela and now he's, um, doing something that he loves in the sport that he loves. And shortly after that, I got the opportunity to go to, um, the Phoenix open with Scott and the players with him as well. And every day I was just like, my dad would love to like, yeah. I know he's looking, he's, he's there with me, but I know he's proud and it, it helps you, you know, he brings you that extra energy, that extra push, like, Hey, he's, he's watching and I want to make him proud. Yeah, man, what a story. Um, and, uh, I mean, first of all, music, golf, photography, I think we're the same person, right, Seth? Yeah, the, I was, I was letting, hair, I was letting Carlos too. get through his story and saying, you guys should hit the, no, hit the links together and I'll drive the cart. No, but beyond, <laughs> beyond that, uh, just like, I love that there's these, there's these little things in life that just can be this, um, this like golden ticket this chip this it can move you it can move you from venezuela to america uh because of a i'm gonna call golf like a stupid frustrating game it really is but it is (laughs) it's a silly game let's let's all whack a ball over and over into a small hole like for five hours it's crazy it's (laughs) it's borderline insanity i think that we enjoy it so much it's a weird magical sport it really is because it on paper just looks insane (laughs) but uh these little skills photography um we can speak to that seth uh, just this these communities these networkings all because of the camera um our retreats meeting people traveling all those things um it's just it's so cool these things that you can put in into your life and and really work at and and not quit on and just keep going and then it's it's like a video game like things unfold like levels unlock like oh you kept going for this long this is unlocked now you know and, and you like you just level up and it's really cool to sit back and listen to a story like that and just see that sort of alchemy from venezuela to here to running your own business getting your masters i mean not not to sidestep over that too your education and your master's pretty much paid for uh with a little bit of work and help uh, it's just an incredible story uh, top to be- bottom yeah and at the end uh, i mean at the same time well first thank you so much for you know um the kind words about all that but i feel like i don't think i like everything that i've accomplished is it was up to me um, like when I, when I got here 17 years old by myself, like obviously I had great, I had a lot of support from my parents, uh, but they were in a different country, right? I had to figure out myself how to, you know, um, cook, how to do my own, just everything by yourself at that point. Like you can get in a rabbit hole that it's, it's mm-hmm. tough to get out. And, um, I, I just feel like, again, not to sound cliche, but if I was able to do it. I feel like anybody can like it's it's something that if a kid from Venezuela that didn't know how to use a camera and out of nowhere finds out this passion and then creates um his own business and um so far it's been pretty good I feel like anybody can do it just have to mm-hmm. again I hate when it I sound cliche but it's it's so true like I feel like a lot of people have a lot of excuses and in my mind, I'm like, it, there is such a, it's such a privilege just to be in this country, being American, being, um, 
you know, surrounded by a lot of opportunities. Again, no, not, there is flaws in every country, but just by being in this country, you're already one step in front, you're one step ahead of everybody else. Yeah. Um, and really like if you, if you want to, like I have, there's people from all over the, 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 there's people from Mexico, from Venezuela, South America that always ask me questions like, Hey, how do you get there? And it's almost hard to like answer that question. It's like, I'm not going to tell them, Hey, yeah, just move to America and like figure it out. But at the end of the day, like it's up to you to, to make it happen. And, and I'm, I mean, I've, I've always said that I've had, um, an incredible support system. Like the friends that I've had along the way really have been incredible. Again, a great mom and dad that were there to support me any, every time I needed it. Um, but, but it's been great, man. I mean, looking back, I, I don't often look back into the, the days of me like playing golf and like my MBA um, and obviously my dad's sickness. That's kind of something that you try to block often. Mm-hmm. But, but all that made me who I am today. and. I think that's one of the reasons why I try not to take any opportunity for granted because I'm like, you know, I, I made it this far. Like, let's keep going. There's really, I'm not going to put myself limits right now. I feel like I'm, I mean, I'm six, uh, 2018, six years in as a full-time uh, photographer, videographer. I think I'm just getting started. Yeah. You know, there's so much more to accomplish and, and I'm not going to get complacent now. I'm, you know, it's no, just, and you, you shouldn't. And you said, you know, not that anyone can do it, but anyone can do it if they have uh, one one key element, which you do have, is to be able to look fear in the face and kind of say, uh, like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep going. I'm gonna go anyways. Uh, moving from a country to another country, that that takes some sort of courage, bravery, or the need to flee. Right. So people that are comfortable often don't want to step outside of that comfort. You had enough discomfort, I think, to say, well, it is scary to move to a whole new country, but maybe not as scary as here. Right. Like you had that, that ability to, to look at it and, and just take that leap and once you do it one time, once you get through that fear one time, the next time you're a, you're scared of something, it's easier to look back and go like, well, yeah, but I just did that. And this is scary, but I'm just going to push through. I'm going to buy that drone and tell them that I can do it because I'm a little nervous about it, but it's, it's not worse than leaving my country to come to a new country, you know? So you, you, you again, level up and build up and it's, uh, I think almost anyone can use that in aspects of their life if they're trying to do something or gain something, but they have to be honest with themselves and say like, do I really want to leave this spot that I'm in for the uncertainty of that new spot? And that's why people move usually like their, their, their situations change when they hit rock bottom. We talk about that a lot. Like, things go really horribly you're at rock bottom you get it you go to the doctor and they say like you need to start exercising you're like you don't have long to live that's when you might start exercising like oh i'm a, i'm at rock bottom now i'm gonna exercise i when I, the doctor said i was fine i didn't change any of my habits right so i think it's just interesting uh to to think about and reflect when we're all sitting here listening to this story and and being like ah oh, there is this thing i want to do but what's holding me back? Is it I'm too comfortable? Is it fear? Is it uh, I have excuses? Whatever the excuses are, probably a root of fear and not wanting to move or put yourself into danger. So it is just, a, 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 I don't know. I, I love the story. I think what's interesting too, and Aaron, you just kind of touched on this, is sometimes pain or significant pain or when our backs are against the wall is, is fuel mm-hmm. for a lot of people. Yeah. I mean, there's no, there's no better way to say it for myself. I think unfortunate events were an igniter for me to be on a trajectory of photography and want to do the podcast and just like try to be better in every aspect of my life. Mm -hmm. It wasn't when I was all hunky dory and like comfortable slacking off and doing nothing. And you know, 
same for you, right? You found your photography through not so nice times. Um, yeah, absolutely. I think what you're what you're talking about too is, and this relates to Carlos's story, is that there's an undeniable stack of proof that I'm able to overcome things that are thrown at me. Mm-hmm. Right as as you go as as you go through your life and you can build this list of this stack of undeniable proof, you can look at that list. And this is what I'm I'm actually physically writing this out right now. I'm trying to go mm-hmm. through the stages of my life and write my own personal stack of undeniable proof that I can look at and say, "Well, this problem you're having right now, or this difficulty, or this barrier, look at all these other ones that you overcame. Or you figured it out. Yeah. There's no." don't even think about making an excuse. It doesn't make sense to. And I think for anyone, I think for anybody who finds himself routinely making excuses, Mm -hmm. start this list, start a stack of undeniable proof that you, you have the ability, even if it's small stuff, if you want to read more, read a page of a book, write that down in your stack of undeniable proof. I have the ability to get through a page. If you can get through one page, you can get through two, you can get through three, you can get through four. You get to that point where it's just, you can't argue with objective evidence in front of you. And Carlos's story shows that. Figured out how to get out of Venezuela. Figured out how to get a golf scholarship. Figured out how to be a TA and pay for a school. Figured out how to make photography a thing. That list is large and will continue to grow. And when the next difficult thing comes, you just look at the list, whether it's in your head or on paper. Yeah. Right? And one one more very important thing I'm going to try to unravel is... If you go back and listen to Carlos' story again, there is very little negative speech. Even even the worst part of that story was like, yes, I know that was a horrible time, but I do look at it as somewhat of a gift. Right? There's he the whole time is a he's telling his body and brain what's the bright so how do i want to label this how do i want to perceive this how do i want to shape my world with my words and w- words are magic like they really are and there's for every carlos in that situation there's many people that would that would just pull the ejector seat and be like oh my dad's sick i got to bail on everything you know like i got to bail on school i got to bail on golf i'm going home to to help out uh and not that that's an excuse and not that that's not a good thing necessarily right. to do. Family is very important, of course. Uh, but I'm just saying the way we talk about things, we can make it a huge tragedy or we can make it not so pleasant, but okay. And we're going to get through it. Like there's just, there's just no one that's going to hide from the nastiness of life. There's no one out there that's going to not have shitty things thrown in their face throughout this lifetime. It's Absolutely. it's impossible. So at that, knowing that, we have two choices. We can really dwell in the negative and the victimhood of it, which is kind of silly because everyone's going through it. Therefore, by definition, it's a norm- normalcy. So... Or we can use it to find the silver lining, find the gift, find the push, find the um, the peace, the the lesson, whatever it may be, to keep going, to be nudged, to be uh, put a fire under you, whatever it may be, uh, is a big part of that is his language and everyone out there, your language. Oh, I don't, I can't fly a drone. I've never flown a drone before. Versus. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. I'll figure it out. It's as right. simple. It's, it's the language and you're telling yourself, oh, I, best, I better go figure this out versus nah. Yeah, and I, back to the, the stack from the proof. I've figured it out before. Like mm-hmm. we got to start making that list long yeah. by doing yeah. stuff. Mm-hmm. Right. <laughs> Otherwise yeah. you have nothing to look back on. You have no yeah. confidence. Right. This industry. I mean, I will say an, anything that, anybody can do it's it's such a it's such a mind mindset thing i've always felt like i've always feel like i've been i'm a positive person i kind of um see things in a very positive way um of course like there's going to be moments that Mm -hmm. you can um go back into you know kind of like the well and things but i've always felt like i'm i'm positive and and i try to make the most out of it but mindset is so important in 
in our industry because really there's no um no ceiling when it comes to like the clients that you want to work for the clients you want to work with or like the people you want to uh share the floor with it's um it's crazy just by you saying that i started thinking about like other people that have uh, had the pleasure to work with and like some of the goals they had. Um, and which I just remember talking about like, wouldn't it be sick if, if at some point I, I'm just thinking about uh, my friend Carly, uh, her goal was always to work in the bodybuilding industry and like find more of the, um, you know, the, the per the, instead of like the sport of bodybuilding, more like uh, people to know the athlete through her photography, like the, the sad moments, the happy moments, or whenever they win, whenever they're backstage. And she always said, I would love to work with uh, Seabom, which I mean, at that point, like uh, Chris Bumstead is, you know, undeniably the most, the, the most famous person um, in that industry. And mm -hmm. I, two people in the whole industry get to work with him. And it's the photographer and the videographer. And then there's probably hundreds of thousands or thousands of people trying to do the same thing. Um, and she always had that mindset, like, I just really want to do it. I'll make it happen. Reaching out to people, making connections. And I mean, long story short, that was um, about two years ago. She's been working with him for a full year. Um, it, it just something that just kind of opens your, your eyes. You're like, I mean, a year before she was saying that I was like her ultimate goal. And yeah, wow. now she's doing that. And even when I go back to like the clients I've worked with, it's, it's something that I remember seeing this athletes as like the top of the top, right? Like, wow. Like if I ever get to take a photo of them, that'll be crazy. And then to the point that you're traveling with them and getting to, you know, uh, tell their story using your equipment. And there is only a handful of people that do that. And then there's thousands of people that want to do the same thing. Like, I always think like, why me? Like, why was I put in this position that I'm getting to work with dream clients? And, and that's when you look back and you feel, you, you start like trying to figure out like, why did I get these opportunities that people don't? And at the end mm -hmm. of the day, it's just, it's your, your mind. Like, mm -hmm. I like to, again, I don't want to get super like in the woo woo part of it, but I like to manifest no, a lot of no, things. Let's, let's right. do it. I write, I write down things. I, mm -hmm. you know, I want to do this and, uh, it just really helps me. And even if it's, even if it doesn't like di directly help you to get a client, whenever you write it down, like your goals or like things that you want to do in the future and you like close your eyes and you think you, you, you put yourself in that position. Um, if at some point you actually get that position, it's almost like you've been there before. You've already lived through that moment. You're like, okay, like I created this. Now let's make it happen instead of being more of a, of a shock. And I often think about it. I'm like, how, um, I don't know if you guys are, uh, you know, in the know about the CrossFit um, industry, but there is yeah, two big that. names. There's two big names. Um, well, technically three big names of like all time goats. And one is Rich Froning and the other one's Matt Fraser. Um, and I've had the opportunity to follow Rich Froning through his last two years, 2021, 20, the last two years of his career, I was his photographer. Um, the only photographer that he had at the CrossFit Games. So everything that he posted in the last two years was, uh, my photos. And I used to look at Rich Froning before I even did photography. I will look his YouTube videos and he'll be like, I got to me, right? Like. This is the guy that's like the GOAT, like four times CrossFit Games champion. And then I got in the opportunity too that in my mind, it's kind of like, how did this happen? And then a few years after that, now I'm uh, working more closely with Matt Fraser, which is the five times CrossFit Games champion. Um, right after Rich, there was a gap, one year gap in between. And then uh, he won five years in a row. And now I'm doing his YouTube channel. I you know, follow him closely. I do a lot of his ads, um, with a few other content creators, but again, it's three of us. Mm -hmm. How did I get this opportunity that a lot of people want? And 
again, I don't want to sound like cocky or anything, but I think I've put myself in, in that situation to get those opportunities. Like I created my own opportunities. I didn't expect anything from anybody. And I think that's something that I see a lot. There's people expecting to receive opportunities mm-hmm. and to wait for them to like, uh, hey, which it can happen sometimes. Somebody reaches out to you. Hey, uh, do you want to come to this project with me and stuff like that? But if you really want to get those opportunities, you have to put yourself in that situation. Network, create relationships, you know, uh, use your mind as an, you know, as an advantage. Like, uh, I like to manifest things, as I said before, mm-hmm. and, you know, like create your own opportunities, open your own doors. If you expect yeah. people to do that, you're going to end up in a rabbit hole of, I, I saw the other day, one of the guys that I know, he posted something like, uh, I just don't understand people that are not willing to help you to open the, something like that, that in my mind, it really, like, I understand what he's saying. Like a lot of people are not willing to like help others. But at the same time, if you live in that mindset of like expecting people to do things for you, you're just going to be stuck in the same spot. Like, go, go get it, you know, like get, get your own, create your own opportunities. Right. I think what you're talking about is the difference between people who make life happen and those who react to life. Those are two very distinct things. Yeah. And I think it's, it's important to try and figure out how we can start making life happen as opposed to reacting to the things that come our way. Yeah. Because then you're not in control of your destiny. Yeah. When you're, when you're Seth to the point, I think, because I I just keep thinking about this is when you're, when you're very comfortable, you're going to react. You'll react to things that might take you out of your comfort. When you're uncomfortable, you're going to move because you want to get into comfort. You want to get into a better situation. So to Seth's point of running and marathons and cold plunges is creating those little biospheres of of ow dis- of ow of discomfort and getting through it uh for overall like you're doing well you have clothes you have shelter you have uh you have a girlfriend you have a cute dog like life's pretty good overall mm-hmm. um it's hard to work and now i work carlos i don't know if you know this but i work in a middle school so i have like tons of data of kids and like just mental like observation of what's going on and i'll have this conversation many times it's my new thing to say the kid will be like what do you want to do in your future i want to be a professional golfer oh yeah let me see your screen time oh eight hours yesterday trade eight hours of your screen time with practicing golf and i guarantee that you will have a career or college or some sort of profession in golf. If you put eight hours a day into golf versus being on your phone, the, the, the overall environment nowadays, and this is one school in one town in one state of the United States. So it's not everywhere and it's not everyone, but I believe looking at kids sports, the way they hold themselves, it is very easy to be a savage and, be the top in your sport, the top in your field, the top pianist, the top guitarist. If you know how to avoid all the distractions, avoid the comfort, avoid the DoorDash delivery, avoid Netflix, 1000 videos on TV. And you can say, I'm going to go practice my skill while everyone else is being distracted. You can be a savage. But that skill takes taking yourself out of the comfort and making yourself uncomfortable and not very many people want to do that. Absolutely. I agree. Good though. And, <laughs> my God. Yeah. Good though, because then, then when you, when you show up, you're mm-hmm. already ahead of 99% of people. Ahead. Yeah. By just showing up and strapping your shoes on or picking up your camera and going outside, like you're ahead of mm-hmm. everyone. And that feel, I'm sorry, that feels good. Yeah. Yeah. It feels good personally. I'm not saying it's, oh yeah, like people wallow down below. But when, when you're out running, for example, like I was today and it was cold and there's nobody around, I'm like, sweet. I just, yeah. all I did was walk outside. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. there's nothing special about me to be able to do that at all. And yeah. I think that's what separates really 
like when you look up to really great people, they're very good at just being consistent at boring things. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? It's not very rare are the LeBron James where it's just an insane talent mixed with a incredible work ethic. Like those are yeah. one in a billion. Most people who are who excel at things are just very good at continuing to show up routinely. Yeah. But yeah, so, the, how many how many people are LeBron James's height thousands, hundreds of thousands probably that just don't have that work ethic. So he has both and it creates like this chemistry of a right an absolute monster, but there there's there's tons of people that do have the talent that just never tap into the work part of it. I always say, and I think, and I put it in my head so it's a reminder, everything that I do, every client that I work with, I'm replaceable. There is thousands of people that can do exactly what I do. And there is another thousands of people that probably do it a lot better than I do. Um, again, I'm, I'm confident in the work that I provide, but I know there's people that do it better, right? And probably people do it better than me in the same industry as well. And I'm replaceable. There is always that, you know, it's in the back of my head, like, hey, you're going to, if you're, if you get comfortable, you get complacent, you're going to get replaced. Mm -hmm. It's as simple as that. Like, there's so many people that want to do this and they're working hard to do it. If, if you take, you know, if you take it easy for a year, you're going to struggle the year after, 100%. Mm -hmm. And, I, what you said, um, Seth, I love that you, you mentioned that because I've always, I remember getting started. I will constantly think, I know that I'm working harder than the people are trying to do the same thing that I want to do. I'm just going to be one step ahead of them all the time. I'm going to try to be one step ahead all the of them all the time. And um, the first time I went to the CrossFit Games was in 2019, which I was a complete rookie. I was in the media pit. I was like, I don't, I don't even know what I'm doing here. I was probably, uh, I don't know if you rank from one to 10 of like 10 being somebody very experienced, good photographer, I was probably a two. So I was completely out of my league. I got an opportunity because of some, a friend that I knew and you know, long story short, I ended up on the media pit at the CrossFit games, but I had no business there, but he gave me that push. I'm like, how? how are all these people here and doing such a good job? Like there is no other uh, answer than they just work their ass off to get there. Um, and in the back of my head, I always thought like the next time I step, um, th the next time I come here, as you said, Aaron, I want to be a savage. Like mm -hmm. I want people to look at me and be like, oh shit, that's Carlos. You know, like I've seen his work that, that man grind, grinds. And that was always my goal. I was like, if I ever come back here, I don't want to be that rookie guy that just like, you know, shoot up with his camera. And it's like, you know, people are walking in front of you. You're like, oh, sorry. You know, I want to be that guy that I'm like, that people look at and like, holy shit. Like this dude, I've seen his stuff. It's really good. And his work ethic is great. And, you know, he's here to, to fuck shit up. Yeah. Right. Not but you that. had to be the rookie first. You had to Absolutely. be. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's the point, right? You, you, you can't jump levels. You can't jump steps. The fastest and way is through. I love to remind right? people too that I see being that rookie first and then that now are doing really cool stuff. I love to remind them like, dude, do you remember in 2021 that competition that you were like, you didn't know what you were doing? Look at you now, dude. You have, you're, you're crushing it. Don't, don't forget about those days. Like, you know, like. It's, Aaron and I do that too. <laughs> it's very <laughs> routinely. Yeah. And I tell people all the time, like, dude, be proud of yourself. There is such a crazy thing like, oh, you know, like being proud of yourself, selfish. I think you should be super yeah. proud of what you're doing. I think you, both of you should be really proud of what you're building here. Like, you know, talking to content creators in a podcast, you know, hundreds of people listen to it. I think you guys should be really proud of what you've built. Thank you. You know, yeah. like what are, what, what's the percentage of people that want to do it? And what's the percentage of people out of, that percentage that actually, you know, three, four years in a podcast, they're still doing it. Be proud that, of it. You, said, you of had some interesting stats yeah. about podcasts. I mentioned that, Do you have them mentioned that. I mentioned it. I sent the stats to Aaron. It's 90% of podcasts stop at three, three or less episodes. Hmm. 
And then of that 10%, 90% of that, like of, of that 10%, 90% stop after 20. So if you wow. have a podcast that goes 21 episodes or more, you're in the top one percentile of any wow. podcast ever. How many so, episodes have you guys done? 211. Amazing. You see, yeah. like that's something that you should be so proud of it. It's, I mean. And, the th- and, and, and I, I don't know about you, Aaron, but I get psyched saying we had another great episode. We had another great episode. I try not to get too caught up on how many people listened. I mean, yeah, that's, that's a good metric to keep track of, but I mean, I'm more focused on the process of trying to build a good product because Mm -hmm. what's the saying? The score takes care of itself. Yeah. Right. I think, is that a Kobe Bryant thing? He says, I'm just focused on playing my game, right? Like the scoreboard will take care of itself. Yeah. Another, another Jack or a golf, uh, golf quote, but, um, or bring it back to golf. Jack Nicholas said, I feel like you can never win. I'm paraphrasing. You can never win until you're completely okay with losing. And I think that's like an important thing too. Like you, you, you're not, you won't allow yourself to be relaxed and do the best that you can, unless you're afraid to potentially like make a mistake. If you, you know, Carl, if you get, if you get tense in golf, you start slicing it off the map. You, You just lose your rhythm. If you start aiming it versus, swinging free and just trusting the process, trusting your swing, trusting the results will be there. Um, and it's the same with this, Seth. I, I agree. Uh, I've, when we started doing like YouTube and, and I, I log into there and see like views or this or that it's, it's changed my mindset from where I was before where I have to be careful of that, like not get down on like, ah, like this didn't get any views or sees or like, what's the point? Like any of that sort of negative talk, you have to be very careful with and just say, I'm going to make a great product. I'm going to keep doing it. I'm going to keep, just get through this sludge part where everyone so goes like, bad. screw it, screw it. I'm not doing, I have so many better things to do. Like right. that, you got to get through that. And it's not part. sexy. No, and it could take two, three, four years. It really could. Um, but if you believe and keep going. And like, you improve the product in that time frame mm-hmm. too. You don't just be like, oh, same product like for four years. You no, get to course. a point where you're comfortable with the product and you're like, okay, let's take it up another level. Yep. And then Absolutely. that accelerates and you get comfortable and then you take it up another level. I guess have it's just really not being satisfied. I have <laughs> such a great quote for you guys. Yeah. Um, I don't know, on top of, the, my, of my head, but... I'll find it in a second. Uh, but yeah, it talks exactly about, about that. Um, let's see. Give me one second. Yeah, While you're real, finding it, I just... Quick before, yeah. um, you were talking about golf quotes. There's another good one by Gary Player. Um, I think it's Gary Player. Again, I'm going to paraphrase. But uh, somebody asked him, how, how is he so lucky on the golf course? And we can look at it uh, mm-hmm. as, as like, how, are you, how you get so lucky getting clients? And he says, it's funny that people say that. And the only answer is that the more I do it, the more I practice, the luckier I get. Yeah. And it's so true. Like, yeah. Yeah. You, you're just creating that, yeah. that path. I've heard, I've heard the saying, to be lucky, you have to be good. And to be good, you have to be lucky. I've heard that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Which is kind of corny, but. But it's true. It looks like we had that talk, oh, Seth, who was it? But that big discussion on, is it talent? Well, maybe it was Brooke. Is it talent or is it hard work? Person got offended with, not offended, but, um, oh, you're so talented at your photography. Not, like, yeah, okay, but thank you. But what's talent? Is it just the end result of what we're looking at? Talent's the innate ability off the bat to excel at something. But we use the word in a wrong way. You know, uh, I pick up guitar and, you know, rip in front of someone. They're like, wow, you're so talented. Like, I didn't just do that. It took took hours of practice and figuring it out and and whatnot. Right. It wasn't just, I was zero talent. I had zero talent. talent. The talent part would be if you were born with an inclination to understand music and sound and rhythm. Which yeah. some people are. That doesn't necessarily. That doesn't mean that the product of what they create is because of that solely. Right. And they still have right. to work to uncover it. Right. Yeah. I found the quote. So it's by Ira Glass. Mm-hmm. Um, it says, "I wish again this 
is perfect for anybody listening that's a you know content creator getting started in photography, videography, and you're kind of in a spot that you don't know if it's going the right way. So he says, I wish someone told me, all of us who do, who do creative work, we get into this because we have good taste. But there is this gap. For, for the first couple of years, you make stuff. It's just not that good. It's trying to be good. It really has potential, but it's not there yet. But your taste, the thing that got you into the game, the, into the game is still killer. And your taste is why your work disappoints you. A lot of people never get past this phase. They quit. Most people I know who do, who do interesting creative work went through years and years of this. We know our work doesn't have to be the special thing that we want, that we want it to have. We all go through this. And if you are just getting, if, wait, and if you are just starting out or you're just getting this phase, you got to know it's normal. And it's the most important thing you can do. Um, it's the most important thing. Gosh, that fun is so small. Important thing you can do. And the most important thing you can do is a lot of work. Put yourself on a deadline so every week you will finish one story. It is only by going through a volume of work that you will close that gap and your work will be as good as your ambitions. So um, again, yeah. to that would summarize, have been tough for you to remember off by heart. Uh, yeah. <laughs> to summarize it is that um, by looking at the screen and then on my phone, my view was yeah. like all over the place. But to summarize that the way I understand this is that Whenever we get started, we have like this like idea of like what's what's good for us, and like we have ambitions, and like we have that awesome t- like for us again, uh, photography, f- videography is an art, and it's so subjective. What you create is like what you think it's cool, and and you know the taste is there, but your work, what you're producing, is not quite where you want it to be, and that's the that's the gap that we all go through from the moment we get started to the moment that people make it. And that right. gap is where most people, I will say 90 plus 90% of the people quit because they, they have this idea of like, I know where I want to be. I know I have good taste, but my work hasn't caught up with that yet. And then they, they just stop, right? Mm-hmm. And what you're saying, like maybe both of you, like your goal is to have, I don't know, 5,000 viewers per episode. And, but you're not there yet, but you know that your, your product's good. You just have to keep that consistency. You eventually going to get there. Mm-hmm. If you know that your product is good and you have that taste, that ambition, just keep going and don't quit in that gap that most people quit. And then that's it. Like you, you'll never know. Yeah. I think the hard part for some people is how do I know my product's good? Like, how do I know whether to keep on pushing or whether I need to change something up? That's that a very true. difficult yeah. question. And yeah. I don't exactly have any answers. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think you have to believe in it. You have to be a little bit crazy, a little bit just sort of, yeah. I believe in this product. And there's a, for every business that's successful, there's probably many that aren't. Um, but, but yeah, the, the cream rises to the top. If you work through it and there is something unique, there is something that solves a problem that people want, whatever it is. Um, if you keep working at it and pushing, it's, I don't want to say it's hard to fail, but I feel like it's, it's hard to not move somewhere with right anything. If you really try to move forward, if you really want to, there's, there are a lot of hours in the day. If you remove the garbage. Yeah. There you is remember. also a lot you can get done in very few hours of the day. Mm-hmm. That's you That's emphasize who. your focus. Sure. I'm just saying like practice and learning or studying or right. Even like I just remember the beginning. I remember the Photoshop YouTube tutorial days, you know, mm-hmm. coming down, being excited, putting it on the big screen and like taking notes. For like sure. that, that was a wild and crazy Friday night, but, I wanted to be doing it, you know, these conversations like this, they're rejuvenating. Like we'll get off and I feel like you need to go lift weights now. Yeah. Seth and I will talk and we'll like, we'll, (laughs) we'll, we'll rehash this conversation for the next couple of days. Like, Oh, that was a really great point. Like let's, we should make a reel out of that. Or I really think this conversation kind of encompassed our whole show. So I'm like, I would agree with that. Really jazzed up about it. Um, and all our all our episodes have something. There's always something to walk away with. But this one, I'm like, 
I'm giddy because it's like, oh, this is the whole point of the show. Yeah. So and it, I mean, I great. agree with everything you're saying. There is something so special about it, like, you know, sharing um, these moments with like other or people mm -hmm. that, you know, do similar stuff and <laughs> you it just almost feels like what you say rejuvenating, like, gosh, like it's it's so exciting just to like for me, like uh, being here, it's 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 something I enjoy. I love podcasts. And it's something I haven't done too much lately. And it's like, it, it almost feels like, ah, you know, like I love being, being in this position. Speaking of that. Yeah, what what's you, your podcast? Yeah, tell, tell us about your hiatus. podcast that you're going to that you're gonna pick Aaron back just, up. Aaron just throws it out. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the transition. The <laughs> we had the moment. I took it. Yeah, it's, um, I'm 39 episodes, 39, yeah, 39 episodes in. Or hey, you're in the top 1% percentile podcasts. Yeah. And I guess the, the one I'm going to do is the 39th. Uh, but yeah, I, I created the podcast. It was, it, it kind of links with everything we've talking about, we've been talking about, because I feel like what you just said, Aaron, um, that whenever you're getting started, you like get excited about doing something new and learning new things. And um, in 2022, I think it was at the end of 22, I felt like I got to a point that I was like so stuck creatively that I wasn't doing anything fun anymore. I was just working and I wasn't learning new things or that's where my mind was going to. I was like, what's happening? Like, I feel like I'm not creative. Um, I just, I'm not like motivated to, or I guess it's not a motivation thing, but I just felt like I wasn't doing anything that will bring me back to those days of like, oh, I want to try something new. I want to do something new. And, and it literally was a full week that I couldn't sleep at night. I was like, what's, what's happening? Like my mind is like rushing all the time. Like what's, what's wrong with me? And one day, one night I woke up with the idea of like, I woke up with the idea of, um, what if I make a podcast? I enjoy talking to people. I love, um, learning the story and the journey about other people that, you know, do stuff that that's similar to what I do. And I woke up with that idea in my mind. I'm like, gosh, it sounds like such a great idea. Um, it'll definitely be something new. I hate being in front of a camera talking. English is not my first language. It'll definitely be a challenge. Like I never feel comfortable being, you know, recorded live and talking just to random people. Like, you know, being your second language, you always have, even though I've been in this country for 12, 13 years, you always have that little bit of like insecurity that it's not mm -hmm. your first language. You have an accent or people are going to think you sound dumb. Um, but yeah. And I was like, damn, if I, if I make a podcast, it's going to be really uncomfortable, but it's going to challenge me in a really good way. And I know I'm going to get a lot of positives out of it. And as I said, it was that morning. I started thinking about that. I called my friend, Ariel Martinez. He's, he has a, a videography podcast. He's had, For, for years, he's had, you know, big guests in that podcast. And I call him like, Ariel, I just woke up with this crazy idea of like me starting my own podcast. Um, can you give me some tips? He's like, yeah, bro, absolutely. We talked for about 15 minutes. And then I called my other friend, our friend, Matt Sousa. He's the producer of another podcast in the CrossFit industry. It's nothing related to photography. It's just in CrossFit in general. And I told him, I'm like, hey, I know you're producing this podcast. Can you help me out? Yeah, get this software, get this mic, this, that, like that, that'll be, that'll be, you know, great. Like you should do it. And I'm like, all right, I guess we're doing it. I ordered everything of uh, B&H the day after, turned the camera on and I'm saying, hey guys, I'm going to start a new thing, a new project. I'm super excited. I'm going to start a podcast called the Content Lab Podcast and it's going to have people just like me We're going to be sharing our journey from big, you know, like um, anything that's interested to talk about. And we're going to have great conversations and, and hopefully people can learn from it. You know, like content, the content lab podcast is coming up soon. Stay tuned. Awesome. I got my, all my equipment, learn how to use everything. A uh, few days after that, I'm running the first episode, Shaking. Uh, it was, I mean, I don't go back to that episode and like listen to it because it's just... <laughs> Um, even though some people enjoyed it, I mean, it was, um, I think it, a lot of people got a lot of positives out of it and it taught me a lot. And then, um, 
maybe not connected to it, but from the moment that I started my podcast, my business also um, went kind of mm-hmm. like, a, you know, on a good, positive um, route. And I think it's because I put myself in a situation that was really uncomfortable. It was a new challenge. And I was in that spot that I was like creatively like stuck that I'm not getting anything out of what I'm doing right now. And it just kind of like brought me back into the, the moments of like learning new things, creating something from scratch. Let's have people, let's talk to people about stuff that we enjoy talking about. And yeah, you know, it's, uh, it's one of the best decisions I've made. And, you know, I've enjoyed every, every episode. Really it's been, cool. been great. That's so awesome. How are your camera batteries, guys? Are they good? Yeah. Good. Well, I have my, my camera has two, um, it has a, Double battery thing, so okay. I'm really in my second one. Well, we'll wrap up soon. Aaron, how is yours? I'm all right. All right. Well, just one point I want to make from what you said there was it's so important when <laughs> you're asking for advice from people who are in an industry or a position where they know what they're talking about. When they give advice, just just do it. <laughs> you know, like just listen and execute it. Yeah, I think there's, there's a lot of people who I feel like who get advice and like, well, I don't know. It's like, well, and the what? reason why I did everything <laughs> so fast is because I was like, this is a great idea. I know it's a great idea. I know it's going to be probably rough at the beginning. But if I wait two more days, three more days to actually pull the trigger, I'm not going to do it. It's, it was such a scary feeling. It's like one of those, like you wake up, you're like, oh, I have to do this. Uh, and then I just, you know, I'm going to do it. I already committed that I'm going to do it. I ordered the equipment. Um, I got the mic, I got the roadcaster, I'm nice. doing, you know, and yeah, it's a, it's a good reminder that you have to, you know, go with your gut feeling, man. Like if you, you really want to do something, it's gonna, it's always going to be scary. Something new is going to be scary all the time. But if, I mean, th- there's only one way to figure it out, just do it. And then, I mean, what's the worst thing that could have happened? I do a few episodes. I didn't enjoy it. People didn't get the most out of it, but hey, I maybe learned some stuff that that would have been worst case scenario, right? right. So at the end of the day, it's always going to be something positive that you're going to get out of it. That's awesome. really cool. Ladies and gentlemen, Carlos Bound, thanks for joining yeah, us today, bravo. man. That was, it, guys. We'll, have, we'll have to have you on for part Dude, two I because I still, have a, I still have a list of stuff, but. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. We appreciate you doing uh, today. We have to Absolutely. golf sometime and, and jam sometime. Yes, Aaron's yeah, a very good golfer, Carlos. I forgot to mention really? that. That's yes. awesome. Not like not like probably your level good, but decent. Good a enough decent, to instruct it. Decent amateur. That's yeah. great. Yeah. <laughs> well, a, as you said, it's a crazy sport. Um, before we leave, I'm gonna I wanna share a quick advice. That yeah. I feel like um yes, please a do. lot of people can get out of it. And it's something that the more I think about it, I notice it's true. And this, um, in our world of this content creation, photography, videography, whatever you want to call it, people buy more into people than they buy into the product. So a lot of people ask me, what, like, how do you maintain that like, long-lasting relationship with clients? And as I said before, like, I'm replaceable. But the thing that, that people really like, buy into it is that feeling of like, family of like, you know, they really buy into the, the, the person that you are. If you're, as I said at the beginning, we have good communication with the client. Uh, you get in a, in a spot that they feel safe. Uh, they feel that, you know, you're their guy, you know, like the, the person to go to. They're going to buy into who you are as a person and not as a product. The product is going to help you for sure. If you don't have um, a good product to get to the level they're looking for, you're going to get replaced. But if you have an okay product, but you are a better person, you're going to get more jobs than somebody that's really talented, but it's not, uh, and there's any way to say it, there, it's not a good person. I know a lot of people that are very talented, but unfortunately they're not the best people in general. And I see them struggling a lot. So if there's something I would recommend is definitely um, be aware that people are watching, people are, they see what you do, be a good person, help people if you're in a position that you can help people. And know that your client's going to buy into who you are more than the product you provide. Excellent. Well, for the second stuff. time, ladies and gentlemen, Carlos Bound. Appreciate it, guys. Let's do it again anytime. I'm, I'm always down for a 
for a podcast. Good chat. A good chat. <laughs>